hello everybody. I can't believe two weeks went by. How's everybody doing? Good? Thumbs up, I hope. Good. <laughs> it's good to see you. Nice yes. to see you. Always a fashion statement. In the middle of the forest. Very cool. And Nancy's here. I know she's probably working on a camera and I'm sure more people will join. So I will introduce, I'm one of the hosts, I'm Roberta, and we have Rano is the other host from Rotterdam, Holland. Hey, Rano. <laughs> yeah. It's Nancy good to here. see you here again. Excellent. All right. So tonight we're going to talk about global harmony. So global harmony is more relevant than ever in our interconnected world. You know, despite our differences, can we connect and complement each other? This is a question. And as we grow into interdependent, how can we use this to benefit society and foster unity? So these are the things we're going to discuss tonight. We have an exciting lineup, uh, inspiring videos we're going to watch, engaging roundtable discussions where everybody's going to participate. It promises to be a delightful and interactive evening for all. So I see uh, Satya, I think, just joined. Nice to see you. Some reminders I'll go over is, uh, you know, here at Open Dining, we try to create a supportive environment where we go above our differences. We stay on topic, no criticism. We avoid politics, of course. Remember to mute your microphone when you're not speaking to minimize background noise. And if you could turn on your cameras, most of us have them on, that would be great. And uh, reminder to keep your answers brief. All right. Uh, keep your answers brief so everyone gets a chance to speak. And I'm going to hand this over to Rano. Thank you. Thank you, Roberta. Um, we're going to start. Uh, all right, this is uh, Satya is here. And, uh, we always start with an icebreaker. It's a very simple, light question and something fun to get us to know each other and, uh, you know, just warm up. You're going to start with uh, your name. Tell us where you're connecting to us from. And uh, you answer the following question. If you were a fictional character, who would you be and what's the first thing you would do? Tell us your name, where you're from. If you were a fictional character, who would you be and what's the first thing you would do? Um, I will give you an example. I'm uh, I'm Rono. I'm from Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Um, if I was, if I probably would be Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny was my favorite cartoon character. He never nothing topped him. He was always fun. And um, I think the first thing I would do is just stroll down the street and just ask Bugs Bunny and see how people would react. <laughs> Next. Hi, I'm Nancy. Oops, sorry. You no, you go, Nancy. You go. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, Susie. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better. Um, uh, I my name is Nancy, and I'm from Glendale Heights, which is a, a Chicago suburb in Illinois. And I would be Nancy Drew. I grew up with Nancy Drew. I always loved those books, and I'm so curious about everything. I would just love to solve a mystery. Your turn, Susie. Well, mine was a toss-up. Remember uh, Roger Rabbit and that really sexy cartoon lady that was, I, I wanted to be her. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh but but my favorite movie is Happy Feet and Mumbles. I just identify with him 1 billion percent. Now, I did show that movie to other people and evidently I love it because it's music of my genre. I mean, my generation. But young people look at it and go, you know, so, but yeah, uh, I'm Mumbles and Roger Rabbit's sexy, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Susie from Hawaii. I'm Alisa from uh... Brooklyn, New York, and I have to thank Nancy that she gave me a hint. So I would be Alice in Wonderland, although it started with a book, but you know, that is that is such an awesome book and, and cartoon and everything, you know, that would be great. Hey everyone, my name is Satya. I just moved here uh, to Cary, Illinois from Oklahoma for work purpose. And uh, I'm just looking to 
see what's been happening around here. And I found this event happening at 5.30, so I decided just to join. So my fictional character, I would like to be Sherlock Holmes because that's my favorite character as growing up. So <laughs> in my school, yeah, we used to read about Sherlock Holmes and even after graduating, I kept following his character, watching TV series or anything. So I would like to be that. And first thing I would do is just solve mysteries, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. I didn't think we were going. You guys have some great ideas. I had to think. That's what I'm going towards the end. Linda uh, hasn't gone. Well, no, I know. Linda, you want to go before me, please? Go ahead, go ahead, Roberta. I'll go after you. I wasn't cutting anybody off. I just was thinking of an idea after Satya. Uh, Satya. Uh, I was thinking I would like to be uh, Indiana Jones. How they went, you know, and, and looked for all the, you know, relics and the gold and, you know, find the uh, the temple and, you know, the, the lost ark, right? I don't like snakes and stuff, but I love the adventure of the thought of that's pretty cool. I'm Roberta from Long Island, New York. And Linda, please. Yes. I'm Linda from upstate New York. And actually, my first inclination was Wonder Woman. I always loved Wonder Woman. <laughs> In the comics, on TV, in the movies, she's my she's my hero, and I want to be Wonder Woman because I want to do great things. Aha, I do, so I do. Wait a minute, I do Wonder Woman for two Halloweens in a row. <laughs> ah, so something got revealed today about Linda. That's a very important piece of the puzzle. Okay. All right, friends, uh, thank you for participating. Uh, we're going to play a very short clip the, of the rules of the round table that uh, govern how we handle our discussions here. So pay attention, please. The rules of the round table. Around the table, no one is more important or less important. Everyone is equal and very important. We don't reject opinions or negate, but only collaborate. The real solution won't come from knowledge or verbal perfection, but only from our connection. Okay. And now uh, just one reminder on top of that, uh, always remember to keep your answers brief so that everyone gets a chance to speak. We can even have you know, multiple rounds on each question. That way, then you give people time and then you can have another turn afterward. Okay. Thank you, Rana. Thank you everybody for participating. That was fun. We all have smiles on our face. So we're gonna watch a video now. It's a very short clip. Uh, we're gonna watch it twice. And there's a lot of good information. This is a good friend of ours did this video. His name is Joseph. And the name of the video is A Path Towards global harmony. So we're going to watch it. And then afterwards, we have some nice round table discussions. We're going to talk about some questions. Uh, it's very short. So don't blink or you miss it. We have to start asking ourselves, how do we complement each other? We have different opinions. We all have views and our own individual personalities. Let's start thinking how to create something that works for everyone, to create something for the whole, where we don't eliminate each other's differences, rather connect them in a new way so we achieve a certain kind of harmony, a mutual complementarity that comes from disparate things coming together, creating a new whole. We're all becoming interdependent across the globe, and we have to at least start thinking, start moving towards how do we do this? time we have to start asking ourselves how do we complement each other we have different opinions we all have views and our own individual personalities let's start thinking how to create something that works for everyone to create something for the whole where we don't eliminate each other's differences rather connect them in a new way so we achieve a certain kind of harmony a mutual complementarity that comes from disparate things coming together creating a new whole we're all becoming interdependent across the globe and we have to at least start thinking start moving towards how do we do this okay 
It might be quick and, uh, but there's a lot of information. I see Victoria joined us. Hi, Victoria. How are you? Thank you for joining. So hopefully you saw the video. I think you were here when it was playing. We have a, a question we're going to go around in our workshop today, roundtable discussion. Uh, one thing I just wanted to mention, like Rano did, uh, if you, we're going to do a popcorn style. Let's say you, you have an answer and you'd like to share. Unmute yourself. Say your answer and mute again. Uh, keep it brief. And there's no right or wrong answers here. We just discussing this and we're going to come to a conclusion with everybody's uh, answers and discussion. I don't know if that made sense, but we're going to come to a, a complete answer together, right? This is the question. I'm putting. First question is, do you think it's possible to connect despite our differences? Is it possible to connect despite our differences? What does everybody think? Can we? Who'd like to go first? I'll go. There's um. There's a lot of differences, like in this community, and so what you have to do is you have to kind of like the video says is look for the best thing in that person and try to accentuate that because there's so many personalities and so many walks of life and you do a community like this and you know but i i do believe we we need to work on this tremendously cool bye i think we can um and some of us better than others but even though we have differences um they can as the video said they can complement each other you know, they don't have to be uh, yes or no. There's always a way to bring them together to form a, a great connection, like uh, a jigsaw puzzle. We all fit together to form a beautiful picture. Yeah, it all comes to how uh, you, each of us is actually approach differences. That is a different, and then that means that uh, immediately are rejected or the approach is that difference is great because my my vision, my knowledge, my experience, my background is is very limited. And if there is something different, that means that this is great. There is an opportunity to know something completely different that was not in my my vision, not in my spectrum. You know, and if we approach differences as something uh, that is something really exciting, then we will start, you know, complementing each other. That's that's how I think. Can I go again real quick? I keep sure. thinking about all these uh, third world countries that I've been fortunate enough to visit. And I worked with the ghetto kids. And when I went in there thinking I was a teacher, I didn't, it didn't work. If I went in there to learn what they, and I learned so much listening to other people's completely different side of the picture. And if we do that with everybody, just think what a great world this would be. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Satya, did you want to add? I, I don't know. I saw you. I thought unmuted for a moment. You were leaving. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's definitely possible to connect despite having so many differences. It's really wonderful that all of us are really different. But at the same time, I think we need to look at things that really unite us instead of things that separate us. For example, like uh, let's look at a garden. There, are, In a garden, we see so many flowers of different colors, different shapes and forms, but they all come from the same soil. So likewise, we are all humans. We all breathe the same air. So despite having all of these differences, there are many things that kind of unite us. So we need to appreciate the differences and also look at uh, the things that unite us at the same time. I think, yeah, it's definitely possible because we are all humans and we also have same emotions as well. Even though the language is different, even though the way we look is different, the emotions are always the same. Thank you. Beautiful. Victoria, Nancy? Uh, Nancy was going to go. Go ahead, please. 
Um, I was going to say some, like, it's kind of like what Susie, it's like everybody says, but I think the biggest thing is, and with the whole planet, if we're talking the entire planet, everybody on the planet would have to want to. I'm not, that's the part that I think is like a stumbling block. I think we all, we could certainly do it. I think we could as humans, we have that capacity. And it's nice to know most people I think want to, but I think that if we really wanted a global response, global harmony, then every country would have to want to, every person would actually have to want, maybe it starts with the person really. And could we get everyone to agree? That's the question. Would you like to add, Victoria? If you'd like. Anybody else? Oh, uh, so, yeah, you know, I actually, I didn't, I came late and I didn't see the video. So I'm not sure what, you know, I'm a little confused about the topic. The topic is global harmony. And the question we were asking, I mean, it was a very short clip, but uh -huh. The question was, which I'll put in the chat again, is it possible to connect despite our differences? And that oh, could is be it possible. Okay. Uh huh. Sorry. Hi, Marvin. Uh -huh. Sure. I see Marvin just joined. Hi, Marvin. How are you? We were just discussing, it I was telling Victoria that we're talking about global harmony. I'm going to put the question in the chat that we're discussing if you'd like to add. Go ahead, Victoria. Oh, oh yeah. So I think we can. Yeah. I think. Um... Despite, you know, our differences, definitely we, we can connect because we're all human. Um, you know, we have all human emotions, the same emotions, sadness and 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 grief. And like I'm in um, like a grief support group and there's people from completely different backgrounds than from mine. But we're all experiencing the same emotion and we all connect, you know, and we're, we're completely different, like everything, like if we sat and talked about politics, we'd probably kill each other. You know, I'm just, I'm just not saying not literally, but you know, um, but basically, yeah, we have a, uh, we, we have harmony in terms of the uh, pain that we have shared with each other. I'm um, not with each other, but you know, in our lives. Yeah. I guess that's, is that a good answer or I don't know. There's no right or wrong answers. I think it's great. You're participating and you're speaking from your heart is perfect. Okay. Um, I think as a way to help, let, let's play the clip again. It's very short. Uh, we play it once. Uh, pay attention. It's very, very dense. We have to start asking ourselves, how do we complement each other? We have different opinions. We all have views and our own individual personalities. Let's start thinking how to create something that works for everyone, to create something for the whole, where we don't eliminate each other's differences, rather connect them in a new way so we achieve a certain kind of harmony, a mutual complementarity that comes from disparate things coming together, creating a new whole. We're all becoming interdependent across the globe, and we have to at least start thinking, start moving towards how do we do this? All right, um, let's continue uh, in this uh, same vein. Uh, is he asking the clip, how do we complement each other? We talk about differences. Differences give us opportunities. So how do we complement each other? Again, the question is in the chat. Uh, if you feel an answer, there's a, silence, more, a silent moment, then jump in and uh, mute yourself when you're done. Remember to be short. Well, I think that we complement each other because everyone has different experiences and whether it's as a person or as a culture, if we could just bring all of those together, we could really be enriched by the different cultures. I think that's what I'm saying. You know, I think yeah, I, I agree. Who's that? You go. No, I already went. Yeah, I just said I agree with her. Okay. 
Now I got to look at the question again. <laughs> you scared me. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I I think the whole key is humility because and being humble because when you go into a situation, if you go, I I got the answer, then you're not really going to learn anything. But if you go into a situation and there's people that you don't know their culture or their whatever, and if you just humble, that's how we compliment each other. We can, oh, what can I find in you that's so cool? I mean, I love to go to Walmart and just compliment every little kid and their outfit or their, I say, do, do you, do you think those shoes come in my size and just anything to make people feel better, you know? <laughs> and if I had shoes that size, I would feel better. <laughs> okay. I think it also would be great to understand, like I'm thinking about nature, that how different it is in a, a different regions, in a different countries, in different continents. And it's not a coincidence that like in the northern countries, there are some trees and plants and in the southern countries, it's a different species. And then you know, in, in, in that is that is all not a coincidence. And and again, the our differences we're so different. Uh, you know, it's not a coincidence. It's just to complement each other. It's just not to fight. It, it's exactly to complement, because that's that's what brings harmony to the planet. That there are a difference everywhere. You know, you go everywhere. Even even like I'm in. in Brooklyn and you go in Manhattan the northern part of Manhattan and the southern part of Manhattan maybe vegetation is the same but the the you know the um, the land the the uh, the landscapes they everything is very 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 different and it's just a tiny island not tiny of course huge island but if you go further the, the difference is even more drastic so the same thing is with us we have have to understand that there is no coincidence that we're so different is exactly to complement each other. So I have a question. I'm curious why our differences um, are a problem in the first place. Why do we Come on. Kill each other because of our differences uh, in the first place. Of course, everybody agrees that there are differences in, in people around the world. But why is that a problem? Like somebody said, in nature, a different region in the world, a different climate, different kind of tree, different kind of animal. But that's not a problem. But with people from different um, parts of the world, it is a problem. Uh, thanks, Marvin. I think this is exactly what we're working toward, understanding those things. Um, so, you know, in, in answering the first, the two questions, like, uh, is it possible to connect despite our differences and how do we complement each other? I think about the example that nature gives us in your own body. In your body, every organ is completely different from the other. Even when you have two organs that do the same functions, like, you know, the kidneys, they work as one, but each one contributes to the well-being of the body, and that's where the complementarity comes. So I think this is the example that nature is giving us to follow, to learn from. Oh, Rono, I want to follow you because you made me think of that example is great, but the opposite is also true. I know this from even experience that if one organ fails to do its job, if it malfunctions in some way, other organs begin to malfunction with it. It affects the body as a positive or as a negative. It, it goes in both ways. So I guess we have to figure out how to keep it on the positive side. And but I think it's got a lot to do with the willing. Oh, I'm I'm sorry, Linda. I'll finish. I, I think it's got a lot to do with the willingness. Do other cultures believe that each culture has something to give, or do they just think they're right and they don't care about other cultures? So 
But sometimes in the human body, if one organ uh, doesn't function right, another organ will pick it up. In other words, like if you lose your sight, you'll pick up your hearing more or, or things like that. But um, as far as people go, um, it's the ego that has taken over us. And my ego, I mean, I'm just saying me as, as an example. Uh, my ego says only people who look like me, who talk like me, and all are, are are the good people, and you all are not the good people. That's that's where the ego comes in. You know, you're saying about the human body, Ron. I was on the same lines. I was thinking about a a symphony. You know, if you just have like an oboe playing, it's not very exciting. Then you introduce a violin, and then you introduce. Uh, you know, I almost said the banjo. Why would there be a banjo in an orchestra? But <laughs> you introduce all of the flute and all these different instruments, and it's the most beautiful sound. So they all complement each other. Uh, same idea, like with the body, like you're saying, when you start thinking about it, it's a, it's a good question. It's a good discussion, really. Who else would like to? But uh, just okay. to address, go ahead, Marin. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll be quick. Uh, I just want to answer my own question. <laughs> Why differences are the problem in the first place? And um, uh, I think it's related to Buddhism that talk about attachment. I think the, the problem, differences are not a problem. Differences are part of nature in everything. The, the reason it become a problem is because we are overly attached to our own culture and values, and that become a problem. Um, so the more we are attached to our own culture, um, the more we are not able to accept other different cultures. So, um, Yeah, thank you, Marie. That's exactly what I think I, I thought to address your question, why differences. But I notice in myself, you know, when I see something, I see it first time or something strange, my my reaction, initial reaction is just a rejection. It's not an embracement, you know, and this is something that comes from, you know, exactly, I think somebody was saying that, uh, it's not like me. It's not what I'm accustomed to. It's not something that that pleases me. It's something not, you know, and it's all coming from, you know, from my ego that wants to everything looks like exactly talks and, and everything acts like like me. But it also comes back to the upbringing, you know, how we grew up what we're aiming toward, you know, toward inside or toward openness and an embracement of, uh, you know, differences, cultures, languages, shapes, everything, you know. This kind of brings us to the next question. You know, as a society, right, we're becoming more interdependent. We're talking about complementing each other than we went to, uh, you know, our differences, so this is the next question. Let's think about this. What are the signs that we're becoming more interdependent? Do, do you feel it? Do we feel that as a society? We need each other, as we're saying, like the human body does. Nature's showing it to us. What are some of the signs that we're becoming interdependent as a, as a society? Does anybody feel that? Would you like to share that thought? I'll put it I just spoke, but I, I, I want to say that this is amazing because I just put this T-shirt, you know, uh, uh, before uh, our, our uh, you know, we gathered and I looked at where was it uh, produced and it was actually done in Vietnam. And I was thinking, isn't that absolutely amazing, you know, 
that I'm here in uh, Brooklyn, USA, you know, and this was done in Vietnam, and I don't even know where the, you know, some parts of material or who was working on it, and it's so far from, from here, and I'm just wearing it, you know, isn't that, 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 that is like, feels like a tiny little planet that we're living, it's uh, my neighbor, you know, uh, Vietnam is is my neighbor <laughs> neighboring country. Well, that's like he said in the video he was saying about as a society of global interdependency, we're all dependent on each other. So I put in the chat again. What are the signs that we're becoming interdependent? Do you feel it? Elisa does from her shirt, which is a good example. Elisa, thank you. I didn't want to go to a sad example. Go, Nancy, with the COVID we had. <clears throat> um, I agree, Linda. And I think there's that might be part of the difference. Instead, like when you look at something, like you said, when you look at something that was made, you see the country name. It was made in Vietnam. It was made in China. I think I found the other day I had something made in South Korea. I thought that was pretty cool. But it's like we never we think of it as one huge group, South Korea. That's it. Maybe, like you said, who made it? Who's the person who works in this industry? How did they end up with this job? What other kinds of people are involved in making these things? And that would be the same question we would even ask here. Maybe that would make a big difference in realizing it's not just a country. It's made up of individuals that are really just like us. Even if it's a different culture, we're still all the same inside. Yeah, I, I think this fits um, as far as interdependent. Um, I've just gone through something that's the most difficult thing I've ever gone through. And I have actually come to the place that I realized that I could not do it by myself. That, you know, Roberta loving me, you guys sending love and I, I play music. But people, people, I, we have to learn to become interdependent and the signs are because we're not making it on our own, you know. And uh, I just, uh, I just was so amazed at how many people are loving and supporting and holding me up when I feel like I can't do it. So, we are becoming interdependent. Thank you, Marvin. Marvin, we're trying to speak. Yes. Um. Um. The question was the uh, in society robot concept. Uh, in society, um. I can understand. Globally, we start feeling more interdependent between countries. However, when I take the bus or I take the subway, I sit in the subway and look at other people around me. I'm not sure that I feel the interdependence within me and all those people that are sharing the same bus, taking the same route with me every day. <laughs> I don't know how do you feel about it. Yeah, I'm sure that we all are interdependent because society, like, I depend on people who pick the trash and um, the bus driver drive the bus and people who uh, the grocery store, things like that. But um, we don't think about it. We not, um, yeah. And I think uh, things start to develop much faster if people come together bringing their own skills because not everyone can have a variety of skills. So if different people come together bringing their own skills, uh, I think uh, that will help a uh, society to develop much faster. I think that's what, make, uh, that's what makes a society whole and a complete. Someone here touched on, I don't know, maybe Elisa, someone said about COVID. I think that's something that really showed us how interdependent we were with the rest of the world. When things, you know, shut down, we saw we couldn't get items as easily, easily, and you know, so many things. All of us know we all went through it, and we saw how something across the other side of the world all of a sudden affected me in Long Island, New York, in my office here, getting even a product for a Snapple, let's say. So you see how something like that, and that's a global pandemic. But uh, that really showed me personally, and I think others, 
how we really do affect each other in so many different ways. And like you're saying, Marvin, I was going to say, what about the bus driver, the tires that's on the bus, who produced them? You know, you could break down anything. I think they said that even uh, one item, well, let's say a house, it comes from every part of the world, all the materials. So everything comes down to something without one piece, you you know, you'd be lacking the whole and I, like you said, it's very difficult to see. I think COVID showed us that more uh, with that example, unfortunately. And it's not just globally. I mean, if you think like your, your own neighborhood, um, you know, there's there's the guy who works at the supermarket. There's the mailman. There's the policeman. There's, you know, all of these people right in our community, within our city, within our state that that help us out. That's another, you know, not just global, but um, intercity harmony. Yes, I, I understand that. I think we all know that uh, intellectually, but... I don't think that many of us walking around feel the interdependence. But that's that's the distinction. We know that it exists, and I think even before COVID, uh, people have been alone together for a long time, and the COVID just kind of make it like in the foreground. But uh, right now, as you are in a large city. You walk down downtown Manhattan, for example, it's, it's, or in downtown Tokyo, there's a million of people around you. You don't feel interdependent. You don't feel because you don't feel the connection with those people. And I guess that brings back to the um, notion of community. That's how people feel connected and belong. Yeah, I think I, I can uh, continue on that. It, you know, it's. Um... As a global society, uh, we are learning a few of those interconnections, for example, the economy. You know, now we can see that uh, an economic problem or a company going bankrupt in one country affects many others. A country in trouble, you know, brings down others with it, and so on and so forth. So we're starting to see, like, if there is a war somewhere in the world, the other side of the globe suffers from it. Uh, but as the as individual within the society, this effect is not always felt. But uh, on, on globally, we start to see all those. For example, the economic progress, technical progress in one company, can benefit you know many more with patents and all the things like this. Um, so let's ask a follow up question to that. Can we as a society benefit from this newly found interdependence? Can we as a society benefit from the newly found interdependence? Try to think big. I think we already have by, I mean, what we've all been speaking about, you know, um, some clothes are made in different parts of the world and and uh, pencil is as simple as, as a pencil is made somewhere else in another country. Cars are made, parts in another country, parts in this country. So we already are um, uh, visualizing this. Yeah, and, and um, can we as a society benefit from the newly found interdependence, interdependence we better because that's the only way we're going to survive. So yeah, we got to get used to this <laughs> interdependence. Yeah, Buon, you know the. I think uh, we we definitely so interdependent. Like the news, if uh, anything happened on the other side of the planet, we all know almost immediately of what's going on. You know, and then unfortunately that uh what what we know are bad news and and they spread out with such a speed it's just unbelievable you know 
what if we can benefit from our interdependence that with this such uh, uh, immense force and speed and and you know eagerness that like bad news are spread out through all, all over the planet we will share our great news because they're happening with the same amount maybe even more you know but but we are not aware uh, of them that may be a benefit of our in interdependence I think just to add just briefly on what you guys are all saying, I'm thinking we're talking about them and over there and what they make. Maybe it's a way to us to start thinking, what do I do? How do I participate in this whole puzzle? And this, I'm a cog in the wheel, right? My my area, my, my me as a person, I think how we benefit from this when we start seeing we need everybody, then people need us too. And I think hopefully people will change their attitude towards others and start looking at the importance that every individual is themselves to society, not like over there. What about here? You know, we, we are affecting everything also. Just thinking of that when you guys were saying it. Anybody else want to maybe yet? I, I know it's already just uh, got off camera. But anybody else that didn't uh, speak maybe? Satya? Maybe? Or Linda? Whoever? Well, you know, uh, it's, it, it, it's not just that. It, 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 it might be another way of thinking family you know some of the family we only see at weddings and funerals okay nancy you were gonna i was gonna say i was gonna say sorry i was gonna say that um when the war between russia and ukraine that when that started i guess I, I, I didn't know this myself so i might be getting some of this wrong but a friend who's really into this stuff was saying that we the part of the supply chain problems we were having is because of the products that we get from Ukraine. If only I could remember what it was, I can't remember. <clears throat> but it was some kind of, I think it was a food. I don't know. But anyway, I it really made a difference. That kind of it really, really made a difference in our lives. And maybe we don't even notice what other countries contribute until something like that happens. And we can't get stuff from them that we nor are used to. And then all of a sudden maybe we stop and take notice. Um, that's a good point in there. Um I was thinking about what Marvin was saying, you know. He, when you are in the subway, you don't necessarily feel this interdependence with other people. You see it and they sit next to you. Uh, but what if we did? What if when you enter a subway car, everyone starts thinking, you know, about you and wishing you well? Just a thought, just not saying anything to you. Just, you know, like have a good intention toward you. What if your neighbors, for example, um, you, you, you were convinced that your neighbors were looking out for you for in your family? How would it change your life? This interdependence is, you know, it's something that um, we have to work for because it's, it's going to bring us a lot. We can feel it. You can see it happening in some spot. We have nature giving us example. But, you know, in order to get to that, like someone was saying also, we have to agree to those terms. Yes, I um, I think that would make a, a big difference. Um, um, one other thing I practice is that I smile to strangers in the street. When I come upon somebody, I just smile. Sometimes I say hi, but then they look at me and say, do I know you? Uh, somebody asked me, do I know you? Uh, I said, no, but I say hi to everybody. <laughs> and then they just walk away. Um, so on the bus, for example, uh, Somebody suggested when you sit down but next to some stranger, start a conversation with a stranger. And for the rest of the um, the trip, you can just chat with that person. This is a way to build connection. All right. So to uh believe it or not, we almost running out of time now. Let's do one last question. Think about it very very, you know, with intent. What do you think will bring global harmony? 
What do you think will bring global harmony? Um, well, I believe, global. I believe, that, go ahead, Marvin, you go. I just throw it out there as a wife. robots, the robots are coming, robots. <laughs> the robots. Think, think of robots, yeah, think of robots as slaves in all times, like in the um, Egyptian that built the pyramid with robots or the Roman Empire. Uh, so we have um, prosperity uh, everywhere. Yeah, so that's what I thought. Satya, so, what do you think? Oh, go ahead, Susie. I know Satya didn't get a chance to speak. Go, go, go Satya, you go. <laughs> um, I think if you want to bring any change, such as like global harmony, um, it needs to start with us. So if we are at peace with ourselves, if we are in harmony, I think we can uh, spread it out and then find harmony in the uh, community as well. And then, um, yeah, I think that's one of the most important things that if we are peaceful, we will be peaceful with others and we'll also share the same thing and spread the same thing with the others. And that's how it spreads. That's how I feel. I know a whole lot of people that believe including me, <laughs> that there's going to be a disclosure of some uh, sort with extraterrestrial help for us. I've been studying this for decades, but um, it's supposed to happen in the next year or two. And remember Reagan said, I wonder how all our differences would just dissipate if we had a threat from an, another. Uh, right. And, and this isn't a threat. They're going to try to make it a threat. I mean, and they're going to try to do a weird one, but there's going to be help. And so that's I think there's going to be huge things happen where all of our hearts kind of unite kind of accidentally into <laughs> to, you know, to to handle what's happening. And by the way, Linda, I love your hair. you got a new do and I love it. <laughs> no, it's just hanging here. That's all I, I, I just washed it. So it's hanging. <laughs> Take a compliment, Linda. <laughs> That's, uh, you Thank do you. Look good. You do look good. But I, I'm just thinking about that, you know, the discussions and uh, that, uh, you know, it's so cool uh, th that we're discussing how to start. And then, you know, it's always avoiding me because everything has to start with me. I have to start, you know, relating to everyone around, to everything, you know, with the intention of that to bring you know, global harmony, not waiting that somewhere it will start, somebody will start some movement, you know, that is, that is happens all the time in, in the human history, somebody will do that. But it starts with this tiny little piece like myself, starting relating to everything differently, that everything belongs, and it just part of this one huge harmony that we live in. Just to add quick, I know we're running out of time. Uh, you said that originally we started, Rano said about the human body, that each uh, organ does a piece, just like we are in different countries and different continents and uh, cities and whatnot. But just think about it. If we're a cell in that organ, we're just one cell, Roberta, all you need is one cell to cause cancer or you have one cell to be healthy. So you say, how do we affect global harmony? That's such a big question. And we're the ones asking it, Rano and I today. But I think, just think of that example that I make a difference in that in this huge body called the world as one cell. So I just thought of that. I have a question, and this is going to sound really insane. Bear with me. Um, I don't know how many of you remember the so the um civil rights um what do you call it actions the the um movement in the, you know in the 50s or the 60s when when you know blacks were out there demanding that they're equal to the rest of us right it's Actually, called no, the, the civil that. rights movement thank you thank you rona the movement thank you i i tell you as i get older i can't think of words anyway um 
I remember when I was in school that they were pushing the um, segregated, not, no, the desegregated busing to get white kids and black kids to different schools and try to mix them up instead of keeping everyone separate. I have no idea if that worked or not. I don't even know. But I'm thinking maybe we should do something like that, like bus a thousand of us over to China and bus a thousand of them back over here. Well, I guess you couldn't bus it, but and mix up the countries. I know it's a crazy idea, but I'm thinking how else are we ever going to get to know what other countries and people are like and start understanding them? You know, it's a pipe dream, but there you are. Forced collective, uh, what would you call it? Forced communication? Forced Commuting. Yeah, for something like that. It's an idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, but, you know, I think it's like why they do that. I see somewhere that some places where cities have what they call sister cities, and that sister city is somewhere in another country. Like, I think Roselle's was somewhere in Poland or something like that. I don't know. Maybe it's that might be the beginning of doing something like that. Just a just a thought. Sacha, what, what do you think? <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again. What do you think? Yeah, I think uh, I agree with her. She's brought a very good uh, Intuitive points. Anybody else want to add? We have maybe a minute left. So what do you think will bring global harmony? Who, who's going to leave us off with the answer to this big question? Know your neighbors is a good start. Nice. Linda Quick, what do you think is going to bring global harmony? Women leaders leading the countries. Okay. Elisa, quick, one line. Mm, it all starts with me. Okay, Susie, one line. Uh, Elisa said what I was going to say. It, it starts here. <laughs> Marvin said already, Satya? Yeah, I think maybe uh, uh, we have to try to be open and also, you know, stretch ourselves to help others and uh, see how we can contribute and uh, bring out happiness. Try to see how we can make others' lives happy, at least a little bit every day. Beautiful. I think I agree right. with Marvin. Say it again what he said. No, know your neighbor. Know your neighbor. All right. Rana, I think uh, it's getting time at 7.23. I know you wanted to... Uh... Um, yeah, well, we don't have to skip impressions, but uh, it's good. It uh, was a good discussion, good meeting. Hopefully you guys come back uh, next in two weeks. Uh, I, as a conclusion, I was thinking about three things. First, global harmony is a goal, whether we know it or not. It's like nature is training us by giving us the negative. Second of all, we need it, otherwise it's game over. Third and the most important, we are not on our own. And life is actually, you know, arranging itself so that we achieve it. Uh, but, you know, it's giving us some homework until we get there. So to illustrate that, we have a nice clip that we're going to play at the end. And I'm going to just go into some quick reminders. Um... I'm going to show the links. Um, a few ways to um, connect with us at Open Diner. <clears throat> you can join our meetup group if you're not a part of it yet. You can follow us on Facebook. We also post on Instagram, Nextdoor, et cetera, and all the social networks. If you prefer, you can subscribe to our mailing list. Um, we're posting the links in the chat. The mailing list the, is only used to send you a reminder every two weeks, and we do not share your email with any third party or use it for any other purpose. Uh, so you can be um, you know, rest assured about your privacy. Some of our old events are on YouTube. If you want to watch and share with friends, invite them too. We'd be happy to have them. 
The links again are in the chat. And uh, then in two weeks on November 7, we will have a topic that is what makes you happy. All right. Um, so let's watch this very amazing clip. And it's, we're going to call it dessert. Uh, you see the right screen? Yes. When you look at the beauty of nature, when you observe this majestic harmony that permeates every atom in existence, when you really take it in, you can almost see the greater governing force that animates all of nature. integrate with nature's program until we can hear the symphony of life around us and join the dance.
our conscious connection to each other and to all of nature is our inevitable future. Thank you guys. I hope you <laughs> enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again in two weeks, November 7. That is what makes you happy. Yes, great show. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully okay. see you next two weeks. Great okay. show. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a great two weeks. Big hug. Love you guys. Bye-bye.